my dear Sai family. How nice to have fellowship with you once again through sharing the word of God. I hope all of you are doing fine even the, during these restricted seasons and as you look forward to reopening of churches, I pray that you will enjoy great fellowship with God's people in the church and the ministry will gain momentum. I want to especially thank each one of you for the love and tender care that you offered to our children, Pauline, Bala, Abhishek and Karun when they were in hospital and all the support you have been giving to them. We are thankful to you and grateful to God for giving you, you to them. Today I want to talk to you about how to respond when God speaks to you. How do you respond when God speaks to you? God speaks to us in four major areas. One, God gives us his commandments. Two, God gives us comfort by answering our prayers. Three, God gives us his condemnation when we do things that don't please him. God's commandments, God's comfort, God's condemnation, and God's commission. Every child of God should have a checklist to ensure that in these four areas we constantly keep obeying God. Because man is created in the image of God, God expects that man lives only according to the commandments of God. Man is not just created and left on his own so that he can choose God if he likes. No. God has commanded him to love God. God has commanded him to obey his word, obey his instructions. It's a commandment. When God created Adam and put him in the Garden of Eden, even before Eve was created, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, we read, let me read for you from verse 15 onwards. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. What you can do, what you cannot do is very clearly laid out for man. It's made very simple, very plain, very easy for man to follow. But when we come to chapter 3 and, the, and verse 17 says, Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I had commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. See, I had given you a commandment. But instead of listening to me, you 
chose to listen to your wife and when you fail to obey God's commandments it's not without consequences God said curse begins the earth shall be cursed because of you so we find that Adam disobeyed Adam chose to obey his wife rather than obey God we notice one more thing about them in chapter 3 and verse 8 you know when they had eaten the forbidden fruit verse 8 says then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day you know they heard his sound God is speaking to them God created man so that he can speak with him he can have fellowship with him but when God came in the cool of the day and began to speak to man what happened and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden how sad you know how did Adam and Eve respond Adam disobeyed God and Adam and Eve hid from God's voice that's not a good example for us we will look into many good examples to follow so first we have God's commandments which we are supposed to follow you know God has given his word containing his commandments when the people of Israel were in the wilderness he wrote the Ten Commandments and gave it to them later through prophets God has given us the scriptures which we should follow as his commandments in Exodus chapter 15 verses 25 and 26 we read this then Moses cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a piece of wood he threw it into the water and the water became sweet there the Lord made a decree and a law for them and there he tested them he said if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes if you pay attention to his commands and keep his decrees I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians for I am the Lord who heals you see God speaks to them God gives them a commandment and the second way that I want to consider with you today is God speaking to us to comfort us God gives us his commandments and then God gives us his comfort the Lord Jesus Christ said to his disciples I will not leave you comfortless when we are in trouble when we are in need he has said call unto me and I will answer you and deliver you and when we pray God answers us God speaks to us through his answers and he delivers us in the first book of Samuel chapters 1 2 and 3 we read about how Hannah prayed and how God answered her prayer Hannah didn't have a child and she went to the temple of the Lord and 
pray and God heard her prayer and God answered her prayer we read in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verses 27 and 28 Hannah says I prayed for this child and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him so now I give him to the Lord for his whole life he shall be given over to the Lord in Psalm 116 and verses 12 and 13 the psalmist David says how can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people thirdly how do we respond when God gives us his condemnation first Samuel in chapter 3 we read how Eli was condemned by God God could not approve of what Eli was doing therefore he sends a prophet to talk to Eli then later he confirms it through Samuel for Samuel chapter 2 verse 27 now a man of god came to eli and said to him verse 29 why do you scorn my sacrifice and offering that i prescribe for my dwelling why do you honor your sons more than me by fattening yourselves on the choice parts of every offering made by my people israel and in chapter 3 was 11 put in let me read for you and the lord said to samuel this is regarding eli see i am about to do something in israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears of hears of it tingle at that time i will carry out against eli everything i spoke against his family from beginning to end for i told him that i would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about now note this carefully god had already sent the prophet to warn him about sins of his sons and it is after a gap of time that god is now speaking to samuel because in chapter 3 verse 1 the bible says the boy samuel ministered before the lord under eli in those days the word of the lord was rare there were not many visions God used to speak in two ways those days one through the prophets the other through visions but those became rare now again God has spoken to Eli through these two sources one through a prophet two through a vision to Samuel So in this vision God appeared to Samuel and God told him about the sins of his sons that Eli knew about there was a prophecy about it let me read on the second part of verse 13 his sons made themselves contemptible and he failed to restrain them first he knew about their sin second he failed to restrain them there was a time lapse 
between the time God had said it to Eli through the prophet and now the second time God in a vision is saying it to Samuel. What could Eli have done? Eli could have fallen at the feet of God and asked God to pardon him and his sons. Eli could have talked to his sons and restrained them from doing the wrong things, but he never did those. That's the serious thing in his life. My dear child of God, God does speak to us through his condemnation, through his disapproval, through his censure. He puts hurdles along our path. He sends warning signals. He speaks to us through messages we hear. He speaks to us through his word. He speaks in our conscience. Our God is a God of many chances. Eli was given chance after chance. But he did not make use of them. And chapter 3 and verse 18, the second part. Then Eli said, He is the Lord, let him do what is good in his eyes. Do you think that was a very spiritual, very noble response from Eli? No, not at all. First of all, God was not too keen to talk to Eli about it a second time. That is why God called Samuel aside alone and spoke to him. But Eli interfered with that. He insisted to Samuel that he ought to reveal everything to him. And Samuel revealed everything to him. But even when that happened, Eli didn't relent. He didn't repent. Instead of falling at the feet of God, Eli said, He is Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. He had already given up. O child of God, when God speaks to you, his disapproval, don't give up. Go, fall at his feet. You know when King David sinned by killing Uriah and committing adultery with Bathsheba, God sent Nathan to warn him. Nathan had no choice. Nathan couldn't soften his words. He had to go tell David, what you have done is an abomination in the sight of God. Nathan had to take a risk of his life and career when he obeyed God to go talk to David. But thank God that David had a very sensitive heart. David had kept God's word in his heart and God's spirit began to work in his heart and David repented. As a result, David wrote Psalm 32, Psalm 51. So, there is a right way and a wrong way to respond when God speaks to us. We read in Psalm 32 when God spoke to David, God said to him in verse 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. You know, very close attention hereafter. I cannot leave you on your own. I am going to instruct you. I am going to teach you. I am going to counsel you. I am going to watch over you. Are you ready? Verse 9, he says, Do not be like the horse or the mule which have no understanding but must be controlled by bit and bridle or they will not come to you. You know, God says, 
I am giving you a second chance. But this time, I am going to keep a close watch over you. I want you to fully cooperate. Don't be like a donkey doing its own thing. Follow me closely. Yes, child of God. Our God is a God of many chances. And today, God is saying, My child, I have given you my commandments. I have given you my comfort. And I have also given you my condemnation. But there is still hope. If only you will relent. And finally, God speaks to his people through his commission. God gives us a commission. You and I must realize our position in the sight of God. Not only are we created in the image of God, God calls us his children, God calls us his friends, then God calls us his commissioned officers. You know what commissioning means? In the army, there are commissioned officers and then there are non-commissioned officers. Commissioned officers are appointed with a commission. They are direct appointments. But non-commissioned officers are enlisted, conscripted. They have to undergo a training. They have to undergo all the, you know, tests of recruitment. But commissioned officers are chosen and appointed to supervise, instruct and guide these non-commissioned officers who are under them. And the Bible very clearly says, the position that God has given to you and me in his kingdom is that we are commissioned officers. We are directly appointed by the king. We have a commission to fulfill. So we are no ordinary people. We can only live to do what we are asked to do. It's very similar to an ambassador who is sent by a country to another country. He is commissioned by his home country to the other country to represent his own country. So, we are people who are commissioned. You must remember that. In Matthew chapter 28, Verse 19, God talks about that commission. What are we supposed to do? Go and preach, go and teach, make disciples of the whole world. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, Peter says, You are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. What a privilege. How wonderful. We are commissioned people. You know? The disciples realized it. So they took it upon their heads preach the gospel all over the world. 
Paul said, Woe unto me if I do not preach the gospel. Because this great commission is given to me. I am under orders and I must obey. You know a commissioned officer cannot live as he likes. There is a decorum that he has to maintain. There are do's and don'ts given to him that ought to be followed very strictly. There's a protocol to follow. Be a child of God. When is the last time that you realize that because you are created in the image of God and because you are commissioned by God, you cannot live the way you like. You cannot spend your money the way you like. You cannot spend your time the way you like. You cannot speak the words you like. Because you are under a commandment and you are under a commission. In Acts chapter 26 verse 19, responding to King Agrippa, Paul said, O King Agrippa, I have not been disobedient to that heavenly vision. Can you and I say that? In 2 Timothy chapter 4, when Paul writes his concluding words, he says, I have run the race and finished the course. I have kept the faith. That is what a chartered officer should say. A commissioned officer should say, I have fulfilled my mission. In Romans 15 verse 21, Paul said, I have made it my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not named before. Yes, he had no other job to do. He had no other mandate to fulfill. He had no other ambition. Paul says, I chose for my life one ambition. You know, sometimes our ambitions are so silly. But Paul set his own ambition. He set his heavenly calling as his ambition. He says, I have made it my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not named before. Dear child of God, you and I are under a commandment. You and I are under the comfort of God. You and I are under the condemnation of God time to time. You and I are under the commission of God. And when God speaks to us, it's very important how we respond. May God help us not to respond like Adam and Eve, not to respond like Eli, but to respond like Samuel, like Hannah, like David, like Paul, like Jesus, like all the other disciples. Shall we look to God in prayer? Loving God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this distinct message reminding us about the four areas in which you talk to us. Lord, keep us reminded that we have to listen to your commandments. We have to enjoy your comfort. We have to bear with your condemnation. And we have to be your commission. Help us, Lord. Help us to be fruitful in these four areas in our lives. In Jesus' most precious name we ask. Amen.